I have kind of a non secular religious question. Um, I phrased it carefully. Uh, the proposition of agnostic atheism that there is no literal God in the objective universe, or at least no God humans would be interested in, is intellectually hard to assail. Still, there is good evidence that religious behavior is an advantage produced by natural selection. Do you think that self-critically acting in a way as if uh, God exists is sufficient to leverage evolutionary wisdom, or must a religion's articles of faith be believed and defended in the same manner as literal facts? That's a good question. Um, one of the things that, that I read when I was reading Carl Jung, he made this claim, which I really liked, was that whatever sits atop your pinnacle of value is functionally equivalent to God. That's good. That's really smart. Um, and I, and it, like, it's smarter than it sounds, which is the case with most of the things that Jung wrote, because it actually does turn out that our category systems are not so much about subdividing the material world into its appropriate entities, but about carving up our experience into categories of tools and obstacles so that we can attain certain valued goals. And so we're always directing our action towards the attainment of a goal, and so that means we're immersed in a value structure. And so Jung's point was, whatever sits at the pinnacle of your value structure serves the function of God. Now, you might have a fragmented value structure, which means in some sense that you're psychologically polytheistic. And the problem with that is that then you're a house divided amongst itself. You're pulling in multiple directions simultaneously. Impulsive people are like that, right? And they don't understand themselves because one day they go left and the other day they go right. And, you know, they, they have no control over themselves at all. Now you said, well, there's no objective God, and that seems to be a reasonable uh, hypothesis. Um, the question then, I suppose, becomes to what degree our subjective experience is real, and that's a matter of definition. Um, I think the religious impulse is an inevitable consequence of the fact that it's necessary for people to live inside hierarchies of value, and that we feel a sense of awe <laughs> The sense of awe we feel with regards to the highest values is no, not distinguishable from the existence of the value itself. Now, and there's real advantages to the idea of a detached God in some sense. And one of the things I've learned about archaic concepts of sovereignty is that um, detaching the idea of, ethical, of ethics itself and ethical power from the holder of power is an extraordinarily useful thing to do because otherwise the king becomes the embodiment of the god and then the king can do no wrong, then you have a tyrant. If the idea of power and sovereignty is detached from the individual and set up as a higher virtue that even the sovereign is, is uh, responsible to, then the sovereign, at least in principle, can never put, put himself forward as absolute. And you can think about that just as a development of human's capacity to abstract, right? We can abstract the idea of sovereignty. We can abstract the idea of ethics and virtue. We can, we can hypothesize that as an ideal. We can embody it as a personality, which is actually quite useful because it's something we have to act out. Now, you might say, well, what relationship does that have to, you know, to the existence of of something transcendent in the religious sense outside of that abstract conceptualization? And the answer to that is we don't know. If you, if you familiarize yourself with the writings of people who've had profound religious experiences, it's chronically the case that they describe encountering something that transcends them and that they describe it as more real than anything they've ever encountered. Now, whether or not that constitutes proof depends on how you define proof. So I'm not making a case for it one way or another, but I mean, Jung himself, I mean, when he talked about God, when he was being careful, he didn't talk about God, he talked about the God image in man. And he was careful never to formally state that the fact that there's an image of the ideal in the soul, let's say, an archetype, that that provided concrete proof that such an ideal existed, you know, in some transcendent manner. But the world's a weird place, and it's not something I would rule out. So it's not like we understand the world very well. And materialists, you know, they try to, they try to encapsulate the entire world within the materialist philosophy, and like more power to them, it's been an unbelievably successful tool. But we haven't cracked consciousness in the least, and there is something about consciousness that's world-creating. And there's something transcendent about consciousness, and it also seems capable of a kind of infinite expansion. 
And it isn't obvious why any of that is the case. Not obvious at all. So, yep. Yeah.